Hi guys, welcome to the second video of the Golang and React full stack to do application project series. In the first video, we saw the demo. So this is the second video where we'll actually start writing the code. Um, so let's get started and we'll uh, work a little quickly so that you know we can uh, complete this project in, in about seven to eight videos max. So I'm uh, in a place in my computer where I usually keep my Golang code. And here I'm going to make a new directory, Golang React to do. I'll cd into it and we'll in it uh, we'll create two folders here. One is the server folder. So we'll say mkitir server and uh, inside the server folder we're going to go mod in it github.com slash akhil slash um, golang react to do. So this is where we'll keep all our uh, Golang files in the server folder and in the um, we'll create a client folder now but instead of just creating a folder we'll actually create it as a um, create react app or CRA project so we'll say create react app client so it'll take a while what I'll do is I'll um, pause this video and come back again so that I don't end up wasting your time. So uh, the job has completed and it has created a folder called client in my uh, project folder. And the client folder, if you CD into it, you can see that it's a CRA, it's a Create React app, all right? And then we'll open up, actually what I'll do is, uh, I'll go to the project directory and here is where I'll open up my code editor which is VS code in my case you could be using anything else not a problem so I as you can see I have two folders the client and the server now the client sir uh, we, we want to use this app.js uh, file in the client src and so what I'll do is I'll just select all remove it and I'll import react from react and I'll import app.css and I'll import container from semantic UI react and I'll have a to-do list component so I'll import to do list from to do list. Perfect. So let's actually create that file to do list.js. The D is D needs to be small. The O uh, with D needs to be small. All right, so for the app.js file, we'll create a functional component. We'll say function app, and we'll return a div. And we'll close this div. And at the end, put a semicolon here after uh, return, and at the end, you know the standard drill we have to export that component so we'll say default app right and here in this div we are going to uh, say container which we are getting from our semantic ui react and inside that all we have to do is render our to-do list component so our to-do list file is the most important file that means and here what we'll do is we'll again do the standard stuff we will import react slash component from react we need to make some API calls so we obviously need Axios we will make the API calls to our backend server right and I need a couple of things from my semantic UI React. So I'll say import and something, something, something from semantic 
UI React, semantic UI React. The things that I need are card, header, form. I need to submit of the uh, the to do list will be in, in the you know way of a form basically. And I need input and icons. And we'll define the endpoint for our backend server. In my case, it'll be HTTP localhost 9000. When you're running your Golang server, just make sure, uh, just run a net start and it'll be TP command if you're on Ubuntu. Uh, and just check if uh, all the ports that you're going to start your server on, the backend server on, if it's free or it's being consumed by some other service. You need to make sure you need to kill all the tasks on that particular port before you start using it. Otherwise, the program won't work. So this is a very common issue and a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people when they comment on my videos, it's mostly because the, the ports on their laptops are not free at that particular point of time. That's why the project does not work. All right. So um, we've defined our endpoint and now we'll create a class based component to do list extends component we'll obviously have a constructor and props here we'll say super props and we'll define our state so we'll have this dot state that's why we're using a class based component because we want to work with state we'll have task and items all right so for now this is how we are defining our state it was supposed to be a comma here so this is our uh, component and then uh, when our component loads so we'll use component did mount usually you make api calls on component did mount right so we want to say get task and get task is going to be an api driven function in the sense we'll have to call our backend apis in this function so um, a second yeah so um, this component mount is a function of this component so it has to be inside that's why it was giving us those squiggly lines here so after making that fix we can go ahead and um, start working on our yeah so by actually by at the end of this um, file you want to export default to do list and here you want to have your render function so we'll say render return and at the end of the return you, you ideally want to have a semicolon and while returning inside return you'll have a div and this div will have class name is equal to row we'll create a row here and all we're doing here basically is creating a header sorry h2 header more specifically with color i'm giving it a color of yellow you can give it any other color i'm not the best when it comes to selecting colors <laughs> all right and all we're going to say here is to do list all right and then we'll obviously return our task and all of those uh, different things like buttons create task all of those things also we'll have here so what i'll do is i'll keep this video short and we'll pick up from here and then we'll also start working on our server uh, side application so um, i'll see you in the next episode do stay subscribed to the channel if you want to know when uh, the next video of this particular series comes out thank you for watching and see you in the next episode